Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to this Worldwide Communion Sunday. We gather today with one another here, present in this sanctuary, with all of you at home. Thank you for being with us. And we want all of you to know that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are cordially and warmly welcomed here. We welcome our children to come to our prey ground and be here with us for a while um, before they're called to go have more fun and louder fun um, in uh, their Sunday school. Um, also, I wanted to invite those who are at home to remember to have a form of communion ready so that you may partake with us at this table. It may be juice, it may be coffee, it may be tea, it may be a cracker, it may be toast, or it may be bread and wine. But know that once where two or more are gathered and we consecrate these elements, truly it is Christ who offers them to us and stands at the table. Also have your Christ candle ready so that you can ignite your inner light of Christ as we do so here. Um, I wanted to say a little bit about our altar cloth. This is um, a cloth from a beloved, one of my most beloved mentors that I've worked and she's taught me and I've been with for 40 years. And um, she's from South Africa and this cloth is from South Africa. So South Africa is being represented here as well as Chile and some other wonderful countries and nations among us. So. God invites us to open our hearts wide enough this morning for the entire world, God's creation, to enter in. So come, let us worship our living God. But they did teach us to invoke and to invite and to know that when two or more are gathered, there is Christ in the midst of them. Come, Holy Spirit, come, light of Christ, and be among us. May our worship be pleasing and joyful and wonderful in thy sight. Come, Holy Spirit, amen. Uh, today we want you to know if you have uh, prayer requests, please feel free to email them. Um, take note of the transition worship leaders that are, are coming the next couple of weeks. I will be here next week, John, the following week, Reverend Dr. John Wegraff. And after that, your newly called pastor, Reverend Cindy worthington Berry, and you will have a guest preacher that morning as well. This coming Wednesday is Pub Theology under the tent, I believe. Is that correct? Under the tent at 7 o'clock. And the topic will be our faith and prayer. We are told to bring our own B. And, and someone said that means bring your own Bible. And others of us immediately thought, bring your own booze. <laughs> Depends on where you head and heart are. Or maybe bring both. Um, also, I'd like to call forward Judy at this time, who has some announcements for us. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. The welcome team is working very hard to strengthen our ties in this community, our church congregation community, and the wider community that includes our neighbors of Natick and the Metro West area. To that end, we've got two really fun events coming up where everyone is welcome right here at FCC. The first is a magic show with magician Fran Flynn on the morning of Saturday, October 28th, conveniently timed to send you out the door just in time for Natick Rec and Park's spectacular event around the common. And the second event is an interactive wildlife presentation called Eyes on Owls on the evening of September of Saturday, November 18th. Come to see me at coffee hour to learn more about these events or to purchase tickets for $5 each in person. 
Alternatively, you can watch your email for the weekly link where you can connect to our online sales of tickets via Eventbrite, and there will be a modest $2 handling fee for each ticket purchased that way. Who will join us? We really appreciate that. I'm hoping I can join you. Um, upcoming events have we've gone over, and um, I believe we are ready for our call to worship. Good morning, beautiful people of the FCC. Please um, join me in the responsive call to celebration. Wait for God, who deals gently with us. Watch for God's appearance among us. Out of the depths we cry out to God, who God hears the voice of our supplications. In all times and places, we can rely on God. We can know a steadfast love here and now. We keep our morning watch together. We will support one another as we seek to know God. Find hope in God's power to heal us. Give thanks for the new day God promises to us. Life's battles cannot destroy us. God's love and saving grace is the final word. Now please rise in body or spirit for hymn number 98. God of despair. Join me in the opening prayer as we sing together. We come to you, holy God, with our many needs as well as our many thanksgivings. We join with you and your people around the globe as we seek communion in unity with Christ. Bless us, we pray, in the name and the mighty us that you do so well. Heal our inner and outer shine light and love on deep hidden wounds, lift up those in the beauty of your own life, and lead us together as your beloved community in Christ, your body here on earth as you see the center.
If God were to mark our iniquities, whatever that word means, let me say, if God were to mark all that keeps us separated from God, who could stand? If God counted our debts, how would we ever find forgiveness? Yet, our attitudes and actions that build barriers among us and shut God out of our thinking and decision making can be overcome. God stands ready to forgive us. Can we forgive ourselves and one another? Together, we humbly join in our morning prayer of confession as we say, O Holy Spirit, how we have shut you out. How often our words have been bitter, filled with malice and anger. How easily we have gotten our lives, protections, and self-protection. How readily we take for ourselves the rewards of another's labor. Forgive all that is wounded and hurtful and false within and among us. Free us and heal us from self-justifying excuses that keep us from reaching out to one another in love. We want so much to believe, to trust, to be healed, to live as imitators of Christ. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, help us, good and gracious God. It, amen. It is this good and gracious God that stands and anoints each and every one of us and invites us to come and calls us by name to this table, to this church, to the home of God. Thanks be to God. Today is a new day. Alleluia. Amen. I invite you now to greet one another the peace of Christ, either in gesture or uh, raising your hand, or if you're really brave, a hug. Um, and I would invite you to say the peace of Christ be with you. So the peace of Christ be with all of you.
time the children are invited to join um, and head downstairs for some uh, play, godly play and connection. God bless you children. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. And now I invite Carolyn and Gail to please come forward and witness for all of us how ONA changed your lives. Carolyn and I addressed the congregation from the pulpit and came out as lesbians. Other members of the congregation spoke that day as well and they shared different experiences that they had had with LGBTQ issues. And it was powerful for everyone who was gathered. And in time, after discussion and discernment, we made the decision to adopt our ONA covenant. We did lose a few members in the process, but I believe that we have gained much more by being open and affirming. The personal impact allowed me to be myself in one more area of my life. I had certainly come out to my parents who were, God bless them both, completely supportive, my friends, my family, and everybody at work. I can't say that I had a terribly hard emerging from this uh, cocoon. I was no longer hiding in plain sight, which so many folks do have to do. We could identify our love for each other, and in fact, ultimately, we married right upstairs, and many of you were there to witness that. For me to be open with all of you and the affirmation I received in return was immense, and it makes a difference. The impact that ONA has had within our congregation is also huge. And in the words of UCC, I looked this up on their website, they say, a covenant has a giving and growing edge which nourishes rather than limits. We have been nourished through the education and the many conversations that we have gave, engaged in over these 20 years. And our children and youth grow up in an environment of extravagant welcome, acceptance, affirmation, we combat homophobia that is rampant in many parts of our country by being informed, and all of this makes a difference. Now, we live in Massachusetts. It's kind of the bubble, you know. It's democratic, it's progressive. But I looked up on GLAD's website, and GLAD, GLAD is a national organization. It is the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation. And they point out that although nine out of 10 heterosexual Americans, fully 91% think that LGBTQ people should live without facing discrimination, 84% and a full 84% support equal rights for the community. And yet GLAD points out they've documented more than a 300% increase in anti-LGBTQ incidents just during this past Pride Month. Uh, compared with last year. So I am very proud to be a member of this church, member of a progressive church that adopted its ONA convent, covenant, covenant very early on. And in terms of stewardship, it is just one of the many reasons why we believe in giving our financial support to First Congregational Church. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. I don't know, how do I follow that? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Um, you'll see that I was writing my remarks upstairs and Gail was writing downstairs and we never did compare notes, so there's a little bit of overlap, but I guess that would be to be expected. Um, I'm going back to the very beginning of ONA at FCC when Vicki recruited me for the team that put together the program and events that led FCC to even being able to talk about ONA. This was maybe 2000. It did take a while. It caused me some angst as I was dealing with my own homophobia, even as I was in a committed but closeted relationship with Gail. Little by little, I got over myself 
and was even able to come out to the congregation from the pulpit two years later. I continued with ONA work after the Covenant vote and remained the chair of the ONA task force. ONA has been the conduit for me to explore the extravagant welcome of Christ, and I can tell you that it has changed my life. Over the years, the programs ONA sponsored or co-sponsored have enriched lives at FCC. We had movie nights and guest preachers and post-worship discussions and book studies, to name just a few. Hearing from those experiencing homelessness, from trans teenagers and adults, non-binary teens, black activists, immigrant activists, and anti-ableists, all was transformational. For me, the programs focused on white privilege, mental health challenges, and trans justice stick out particularly. I know I have failed to mention some facet of ONA-related work, but you get the idea. ONA has opened many eyes and hearts in the congregation. FCC has been changed by ONA work. To close, I wanted to take just a minute to talk about our public ONA face through flying the pride, trans, and mental health flags on our building's Main Street side. Community members and visitors were often telling Vicki or Sarah Lynn what seeing the flags meant to them. Acceptance, welcome, of being seen. I want you to understand that anyone in a marginalized community, and there are many, I've noted a few, those whom throughout history were condemned by religious establishments, just the sight of those flags flying outside of our church is powerful. When it's evident to all that we welcome LBGTQIA individuals, every other excluded community knows that they are also welcome. It is a very important part of our community outreach. And even if we do not see their faces here, know that people driving to work or to visit grandma or walking to the farmer's market, going to Kikan, see those flags and know immediately that it is safe here for them, that they are welcomed here. And as the keeper of those flags, I am grateful for the opportunity to keep our welcome proclaimed, which I firmly believe changes our community. Thank you. Amen. Uh, the two of you are part of the reason why Stephen and I felt really comfortable to choose this as our home church. So thank you, among other reasons and people. <laughs> but this time we um, are delighted at, and we have the opportunity, the privilege really, of sharing our gifts, whether it be of time or our personal stories, monetary gifts, service in the church, Know that your gifts are needed, are welcomed, are received. The morning offering will now be received.
and together we pray our prayer of thanksgiving and dedication. Thank you, God, for the generosity that you enable us to share. We are rich in so many ways. Help us to empty ourselves of pretense, even as we pour out gifts of gratitude. We dedicate our offerings and ourselves to shaping the community you intend in the spirit of Christ. Amen. Please be seated. In honor of um, wor uh, World Communion Day, I will also read the scripture in Spanish. I will do it first in English and then in Spanish. The Christian scripture is from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. Now in Spanish. Yo soy la vid verdadera y mi padre es el que cultiva. Si una de mis ramas no da uvas, la corta. Pero si da uvas, la poda y la limpia para que dé más. Ustedes ya están limpios por las palabras que les he dicho. Sigan unidos a mí, como yo sigo unido a ustedes. Una rama no puede dar uvas de sí misma, si no está unida a la vid. De igual manera, ustedes no pueden dar fruto, si no permanecen unidos a mí. Yo soy la vid, y ustedes son las ramas, y el que permanece unido a mí, y yo unido a él, da mucho fruto, pues sin mí no pueden ustedes hacer nada. El que no permanece unido a mí será echado fuera y se secará como las ramas que se recogen y se queman en el fuego. Si ustedes permanecen unidos a mí y si permanecen fieles a mis enseñanzas, pidan lo que quieran y se les dará. En esto se muestra la gloria de mi Padre, en que den mucho fruto y que lleguen así a ser verdaderos discípulos míos. Yo los amo a ustedes como el Padre me ama a mí. Permanezcan, pues, en el amor que les tengo. Si obedecen mis mandamientos, permanecerán en mi amor, así como yo obedezco los mandamientos de mi Padre y permanezco en su amor. Les hablo así para que se alegren conmigo y su alegría sea completa. Praise be to God, the word of God for the people of God. Will you pray with me? 
God of all creation, God of all people and places, God of all denominations, all colors, all races, God of the universe, creator, mystery. Come and be among us and be in us and work through us. And I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Amen. Well, I was driving here this morning and I heard the wonderful music on the common and I saw people gathering to walk to raise money for the Jimmy Fund and I saw other people bringing their children out for strolls or walking their four-legged children and I saw people here in the church preparing to worship the living God and I saw children gathering and it was good. Autumn is upon us. I love the fall. How many of you love autumn? I've asked you this practically every week. Wait till we get to Christmas. Fortunately, you will have uh, someone else asking you how much you love winter. <laughs> but here in New England, the changing seasons, the cooling temperatures, shorter days, changing colors, all point to a very quiet and subtle sacred mysteries that our indigenous people paid very close attention to. Whether it's the scent of baking bread or the taste of yas pumpkin spiced coffee, the sipping of warm apple cider, or the first bite in that cold, crisp, rosy red apple, all things point to transition and change. It's a time of harvest, and what is above is below, and what is out is in. It is a time of harvest for our souls as well, a time when the hard labor of early spring soil preparations in our souls and in the soil, in spring seeding, summer weeding, watering, tending to one's garden, garden yields great fruits and vegetables or shows the drastic, as we have seen in New England, often devastating signs of flood or drought or sun scorching, overexposure, or extreme weather of any kind. This is also true of our souls. What is above is below, what is out is in. Autumn is a time of turning our hearts and minds to home, ohm, home. It is not to, um, it is to the warmth of the hearth and the gathering around the table and a time of turning inward. It's a time when all of God's four-legged creatures, as well as God's winged ones and owls and God's two-legged humans, begin to think seriously about shelter for one another, for those out on the street, about protection from the coming winter, about a place to call home. We remember how many people in our world, our country, our cities, and even in our own affluent town have no place to call home. We are aware of the many refugees, most recently the Haitians in this world, in our town, in Framingham, in Worcester, who wander still looking for shelter, looking for sanctuary. Are we not all looking for sanctuary? Jesus beckons us to address these outer situations and our siblings and beckons us to deepen our own understanding of home. Jesus said, abide in me as I abide in you. To abide, that word, the variation is abode to live with, to live in, to live through. 
to stay in one place, no matter where you may travel, to dwell, to wait, to endure, to abode. Jesus calls us today, invites us, beckons us, pleads with us as a mother would plead with her children, abide in me, come, make your home in me, find shelter in me, live in me, come home to me. I stand ready to welcome you in a warm kitchen with baked bread and tea, come home to me. Do you not perceive that? Don't you see I've already made my home in you? Do you not know that you are indeed a living temple of my Holy Spirit? Do you not know that I gave up everything willingly, even my very life, that I may abide in your hearts so that you too shall also live? So come, people of God, accept this invitation and make your home in me, says Christ. Make yourself at home in my love. What an invitation. Make your home with God. No matter where you are, there you are. No matter where you go, there is God. Live with God. Build your shelter upon the solid foundation of love, not shifting sands of money or success. For many of us, we have learned perhaps had even been bred or raised to be rugged individuals, to be self-sufficient and radically reliant upon our own efforts, skills, and ways. And you know, that's not such a bad thing. There's a, a place for that. It's good to do our part to make an effort to try to do the best of our own abilities to bear good fruit for one another, but this thinking to any extreme keeps us separated from the reality that we need source. And it separates us from our maker and separates us from one another and separates us from the love of God. And yet so often we discover time and time again that the fruits of all of this self-sufficient lifestyle are fleeting, meaningless, empty, or in some cases may even be truly destructive and also cause harm to others. Certainly that was not anyone's intention, but the natural results of just doing it my way happens to go that way. Jesus intervenes. Jesus reaches out to help us and say, don't you realize that apart from me, I who am the very tap root of your being, the body of which you are a branch, you will not be able to produce a thing without me. Nothing of lasting value, nothing of meaning apart from me. The Gospel of John, as written in the message, says in the same way that a branch cannot bear grapes by itself, but only by being joined to the one vine, so too you cannot bear fruit unless you are joined with me. Apart from God, separated from God, we actually become separated from our best selves, from our very source from our own souls, from that which gives us life and fills us with living water and bread and cup. When we abide in Christ and Christ abides in us through love and following the commandments, service to and with one another, we ourselves become that living sanctuary for others. God deems us, indeed calls us, to become living homes for the very hurting souls of this world, 
to become a place of refuge, a place of shelter, a place of holy communion for others who would not desire to be this for an other, most especially when Christ has been that for us. What if you could heal an other person in the name of Christ simply by a wholehearted hug? What would you do? I am the vine, you are the branches. When you've joined with me and me with you, the relation intimate and organic, the harvest is sure to be abundant. As stated in the message in the version of the Bible, it's time, people, to make your home in God. Here, at this very simple and very beautiful and very holy table on this worldwide Communion Sunday, when we join with millions upon millions of other people of faith in this particular morning, Christians in this world, there is an invitation from Jesus himself to come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. But not only rest, there's so much more I wish to give you. I give you shelter. I give you sanctuary. I will be for you living water. And together, we will be a living sanctuary for others. Together, we will bear much fruit for the very hungry world. So Jesus invites us. He calls out and says, join with me, beloved. Become one with me commune with me, live and move and have your being in me and see how together we can restore this world to the creator's original dream. A beautiful, <laughs> lush garden with music playing on the common and children laughing. A dwelling place for the holy to come home for all people of all nations. Abide in me as I abide in you, says the humble Holy One. Amen. Here at this table, we, each and every one of us, are called by name and we are invited to partake of a meal made of the fruits of the earth, the fruits of the vine, the harvest of the fields, of simple bread and cup. And yet, when we join together in prayer and we, pr we ask and pray for the Holy Spirit to consecrate these elements, something magnificent and holy happens and these elements are blessed, and we, by in taking them in, are also truly blessed. So join with me as I pray the prayer. When Jesus gathered with the disciples on that last night in the upper room, they were really actually best friends, hanging out, breaking bread. And he said to them on that night something very perplexing. He took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it open and he said to his dear beloved friends friends family loved ones this is my body willingly broken open for you participate in this as often as you'd like in memory of Jesus and in the same manner Jesus took the cup and he blessed it, and he poured it out. And he said, this is the cup of the covenant of promise, of abiding. This is the cup of new life. This is the cup of salvation. 
This is my life force, my chi, spilled out for you and for the world, for forgiveness and joy. Come and drink this as often as you wish in memory of me. Will you please raise your hands and join with me in blessing these elements? Holy Spirit, through the power of your love, through the miraculous, simple power of presence, we ask your spirit to bless, to imbue these elements with your presence, with your healing, with your forgiveness, with your love, that as we partake in this holy meal with Jesus, we partake in this meal with the entire world, perhaps even the entire universe. Come, Holy Spirit, for all things are now ready. Amen. Amen. So this morning, um, we are going to be serving you um, on either side, and we invite you to, to take the bread and to take the cup and to return to your seats, and we will partake in this together. There um, is gluten-free GF, and there is real white wine, which I'm really excited about, but <laughs> there's real white wine and the, there's grape juice that's in the red. So no, um, if you would like a sip of wine, it is white wine, um, and then the red is juice. So um, I would invite the worship team to please come forward and join with me. And I invite you to um, simply come forward and then go back down around the outside aisles. Thank you. Cup of salvation. Cup of salvation poured out for you, Randall. Keep at it. Take another one. Thank you. Cup of salvation poured out for you. Cup of salvation poured out for you. Myrna, the cup of salvation poured out for you. Thank you. The cup of salvation poured out for you, Mary. a cup of juice. It's okay to take it back to your seat, okay? Good job. Good job. Did you serve me? Yes. The bread of Christ broken for you, David. Beloved, this is the cup of salvation. This is the bread of life. Come, taste, eat, and drink, and know that God is good. We take this communion together with one another, with the world, and with Christ.
and together we pray the prayer of thanksgiving. Nourishing God, we thank you for feeding our souls at this table, a place of communion, union, and healing. We thank you for uniting us with all your people around the globe. May we go forth in your name as bread and cup for others. Amen. And we continue our worship this morning by taking this beautiful energy and this nourishment and combining it together to turn into prayer blessed by God, to bless those, to pray for those, to lift up those who may be in need. Um, this past week, Bob Legu, Legu, uh, a former organist and music director here, um, passed away this past week. So I am very sorry for your loss. And we pray for his wife, Nancy, and for his whole family. And may he be greeted by a glorious, joyous, heavenly choir where all the stops are pulled out in that organ. Thank you for your service. We pray for all the Haitian refugees that have been placed at our doorsteps, displaced into our hands, and we have wonderful opportunities to serve them and to help them and Lots and lots of people behind the scenes really just organizing so that we can distribute and take care of just the physical needs of these beloved. So I know Sarah Lynn is impassioned by this as well as our others and your mission team and oh, the opportunities we are going to have to minister and serve in the coming weeks and months and years are really uh, blessed and um, look for the face of Christ. Look for Jesus when you're serving one another. Are there any other prayers or concerns that you would like lifted up or joys and celebrations that you would like lifted up this morning? We pray for peace, and we pray for you, and thank you for being here, and we pray for your neighbors, and we pray for all people who are seeking one way or another to make a living. Thank you. Others? Yes. For your dear friend Debbie who has stage 4 pancreatic cancer and for her 14-year-old daughter, we lift Debbie and you and her family and especially her daughter up to God and ask that that healing bomb be placed in their hearts and that they know that this is not the end of the story but a part of a beginning. Others? Let us be together in a spirit of prayer. Holy One, God whose greatest dream was that they might be one, that we might be one. Win us over that we might be one by you. And may we be united in Christ. And may your peace, which passes any of our human comprehension or understanding, may that very peace of Christ come and dwell and live among us. Holy One, show us how to make our homes in you, even as you have humbled yourself, have come from the highest heights of heaven to dwell within our flesh to be God incarnate among us. Help us to be that for others. Call us 
home here and now, even as we seek for you to call us home when we drop the robe or lose these bodies of ours. Come home to God. Come home to Christ. Abide in me as I abide in you. May it be so. Alleluia. Amen. And together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, O divine parent who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I invite you to rise in body and or spirit, whatever way you are able, and join in our sending him one body, one bread. Hymn number 602.
in benediction. Go forth and abide in God. Go forth and let others abide in you that you may be the home of the living, moving, breathing, loving Christ. Go forth in love. Alleluia. Amen.